Good day, students. So next week, we're going to be going over questions 1 to 5 on the January 3rd, 2013 Integrated Algebra Reader to Exam. Uh, you can get a copy of this document on mad.shrev.com. So let's go ahead and take a look at um, question number 1. All right, so in question 1, it says the number um, of hours spent on math homework during one week and the math grades, the math exam grades for 11, 7, 11 students in Ms. Smith's algebra class are plotted below. Okay, so these are the data points for the 11 students. Um, uh, time spent, homework increasing from left to right, and then exam grades going up from bottom to top. Okay, so it says based on the plotted data, what is the correlation between the time spent on homework grade and exam grade? All right, so we have positive, negative, no correlation cannot be determined. If you're given a data set of data points, ideally it should be classified as either positive, negative, or not, no correlation, okay? Cannot be determined, um, doesn't make any sense, so let's scratch that out. It has to be one of these three, either positive, negative, or no correlation, okay? All right, so positive correlation basically means that the pattern of points are going out from left to right. So think about positive slope, okay? What does a uh, positive slope look like? If you're going from left to right, let me change the color of my line. Um, from left to right, and the line goes up, that's a positive slope, okay? So uh, if the data points are going out from left to right, you have a positive correlation, just like a positive slope, okay? And um, if you're going from left to right, and the line is going downwards, like this, going down from left to right, in that case, you have a negative correlation, just like you have a negative slope, okay? This is going to be a negative correlation. So you just look at the points in general, group them, and then see uh, what they look like. So the, if the points are like following some kind of downward pattern, as you go from left to right, you have some, some sort of negative correlation, okay? And then if it's going up, or you have positive correlation. Yeah, all right, just an example. But if you have a set of data points that are just scattered all over the place without any orientation up or down, they're just scattered all over the place, um, something like this, in that case, there is no correlation, okay? So look at this set of points. You notice that it's kind of going upwards from left to right. Okay, so let me draw a line for you. See, I can draw a line right here that basically uh, fits nicely into to describe the pattern of the points that we're going through. Okay, so if you see the pattern, generally they're going upward from left to right. You basically look at the general pattern of the points and it should tell you what the correlation looks like. So since it's kind of going upwards, see this um, region I have drawn here, since it's going upwards from left to right, our correlation is positive. All right, so there you have it. Okay, let's uh, take a look at question two. It says, um, a car uses one gallon of gasoline for every 20 miles it travels. If a gallon of gasoline costs $3.98, how much will um, the gas cost to the nearest dollar to travel 180 miles? Okay, so this one, they can use a proportion to solve it. Um, a proportion is a statement that two fractions are equal. Uh, so um, let's go ahead and set up the proportion. So before I do that, I want to declare what I'm looking for, okay? How much will the gas cost to the nearest dollar? Okay, so let um, x equals uh, cost of gas. All right, that's what we're going to be looking for, okay, cost of gas. All right, so we're going to set up our proportion. We're going to put the cost on in the numerator and the mileage in the denominator. Okay, it doesn't really matter how you set it up. Just keep make sure that the units are consistent either on the top or on the bottom. So in the numerator, I'm going to have cost. Okay, I'm going to have cost over mileage in the denominator. I'm going to color code it so it don't get confused, okay? Cost over mileage. All right, so based on this problem, I know that uh, one gallon costs 398 and it is for 20 miles, all right? So for $3.98, $3.98, uh, I can travel 20 miles, okay? The question asks for X miles. So, I mean, for X dollars, right? 
So for X dollars, X dollars is what I'm looking for. How much does it cost me to travel? How much does it cost me to travel uh, 180 miles is the question. So if we have X dollars for how much does that cost me to travel um, 180 miles, okay? Because it says, how much will it cost to travel 180 miles? All right, so there we have a proportion. If I solve it for X, it's basically gonna tell me um, how much it's gonna cost to travel 80 miles. But one thing I wanna note also is that we are working to the nearest dollar. So we, we can round this up and have a nice nice answer, okay? So instead of 398, if we round it to the nearest uh, dollar, this is bigger, it's five or greater, the um, uh, once the tenth place is five or greater, so we can round up. So we have four over twenty equals x over one hundred and eighty. Okay. So there are different ways you can solve a proportion. You can cross multiply, or you can, um, yeah, basically cross multiply is the best way uh, to do this case. Or try and eliminate the denominators. Okay. I'm going to cross multiply. Basically, multiply uh, this denominator, this denominator on the left to that numerator on the right, and then this denominator on the, I mean, the one on the right to the left, and then the one on the left to the right, like that, okay? So we're gonna have um, four times 180 equals 20 times X. Okay, we're looking for X. Four times 180 is 720 equals 20 X. And then we divide both sides by 20. All right, 20. And then you have um, x equals, if you, this 20 is divided out, and you can divide out the zeros by dividing by 10. 2 divided by 72, 2 goes into 7 3 times, remain to 1. 2 goes into 12 6 times. So it's $36. Okay, $36. Another way you could solve this equation was just multiply both sides by 180 to get x by itself. Um, that's another way you could do it. Um, so basically, um, if you want to cover 180 miles, it's going to cost you $36 to the nearest dollar. All right, so that goes an example of how to use proportions to solve um, problems involving two related quantities. All right, let's take a look at question um, three. It says that if Angelina's weekly allowance is D dollars, uh, which expression represents her allowance in dollars for X weeks? Okay. So this is another example where we can use proportion to solve. We see that there's a relationship between the week, uh, the time spent, which is weeks, and the amount she earns in dollars, okay? So it's dollars per week. So I'm gonna set up um, a proportion here, but let me first of all um, uh, def define the variable that I'm looking for, okay? So what am I looking for? Which expression represents her allowance? Okay, so I'm gonna say let uh, y equals her allowance. That's what we are uh, going to be looking for. Okay. All right. So let's set up our, our ratios again. Um, and the numerator, I'm going to have a uh, number of weeks. Okay. Number of weeks. And then in the denominator, I'm going to have, um, let's see, allowance in dollars. Allowance. Okay. Denominator allowance. All right, so let's set up our proportion. So um, um, every week, for a week, for every one week, how much does she earn? How much allowance does she earn in one week? If a weekly allowance is D dollars, that means for every week she earns D dollars, okay? Now, for X weeks, how much does she earn? That's what we're looking for, in X weeks, how much does she earn? Y dollars is what she earned. So if I can get Y isolated, that will tell me the expression that represents her earnings for X weeks, okay? All right, so um, what are our earnings? Let's try and get Y by itself, and then the other side of the equation will be her earnings, okay? So let's um, isolate Y. Remember, we talked about using cross multiplication. We can do that here. So if we cross multiply, bottom to top, bottom to top, we're going to have 1y equals uh, dx, d times x, okay? Or y equals dx. 
All right, so guess what? Dx is how much allowance she, she earns in next week. So, okay, the expression for how much she earns. Okay, so the final result um, is Dx, option number one. All right, let's move on to question four. Um, it says, what is the solution of the system of equations shown in the graph below? So, um, the solution to a system is uh, given in graphical form is a uh, coordinate um, the coordinate value of the intersection of the two lines. Okay, so we have two lines L1 and L2. They basically intersect at this point. So the coordinates of that intersection is your solution. All right. Uh, one thing you want to watch out for, it is not the intersection of the x-axis. It is when the two lines intersect. The intersection on the x-axis, the mean the, the roots of some quadratic equation, and that's not related to systems. So we got to keep that in mind. All right. So there's only one intersection here. And what are the coordinates of that intersection? Um, this is the negative 1 on the x-axis, and this is 1 to negative 2 on the y-axis. Okay, so please be careful when you're graphing your points. The coordinates of this point, uh, the coordinate of this point is negative 1, negative 2. Some people might misread it and invert and interchange the coordinates, so you have to be careful to make sure that the x comes first and the y comes second, okay? So your answer is going to be option number three. So there you have it. All right, let's take a look at the next problem. Question five is, uh, it says the solution to the equation five minus two X equals negative four X minus seven is, now this is an equation where uh, we're solving um, an equation with variable variables on both sides, okay? So the goal is to isolate the variable and that will be the solution to your equation. So five minus two X, equals negative 4x minus 7. All right, so if I, uh, I want to move the x's to somewhere where it's positive to minimize my number of steps. So if I add 4x to both sides, that will result in a positive x because the positive x value will be bigger than a negative one. So I'll add 4x to both sides. And while I add it, we can also Move the since adding 4x moves the, the ver x's to the left, this 5 needs to go to the right. So, what I'm going to do is do the opposite of positive 5, which is to subtract 5 from both sides. Okay, we can do both steps simultaneously so that we don't make mistakes. All right, so after doing this step, all the variables should be on one side and all the, and the constants should be on the other side. Okay, so if you notice, these are opposites, they add up to 0. Minus 2 plus 4, the signs are different, so you subtract and keep the sign of the bigger, which is positive. So you have positive 2x equals, and then this are opposites, so they add up to 0. Negative 7 minus 5, the signs are the same. You add and keep the sign, negative 12. And to isolate x finally, divide both sides by 2. And then you have x equals negative 6, and that's your final answer. The answer is option number four. All right, so there you have it. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. You can feel free to subscribe to my channel by clicking up here. Our more clips, including this document, can be found on macoserve.com and also post a comment to let me know what you think about this presentation. Thanks again and have a wonderful day.